Hello, I'm Pastor Josh Barnes, and this is Point of View. Thanks for joining us today. I wanted to share with you a few more interviews that we did at the NRB conference in Orlando, Florida. Today, an interview with Jared Giese, an executive at Angel Studios, and Tim Ballard, the subject on whom a new Angel Studios movie is based, Keith Sanders from Right America and I both sat down with them to talk about the new film, Sound of Freedom. Here's what we found. Well, we're continuing our series of interviews here at NRB in Orlando, Florida. Uh, thanks for joining us. I'm Josh Barnes, and I am sitting here with Jared Giese, who is the Senior Vice President of Distribution at Angel Studios. And Jared, thank you so much for joining us on Yeah, my pleasure. America Glad Media. to be here. Yeah, it's great to have you. I'm a big fan of Angel Studios. I've I've been kind of following you guys ever since, you know, you were just the vid angel, you know, just, you know, uh, cleaning up uh, sour <laughs> movies. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Vid Angel still is out there and we've sold that. It's in a separate business, but uh, it was definitely where we started. Were you a part of, of Angel Studios back then? No, I, I have joined since then, and since so then, I'm yeah. very much aware of, of the history of Vid Angel, but uh, I've only been a part of it since it's been Angel Studios and our focus on original content. Right. Now, so there's all kinds of original content that, that Angel Studios has put out, children's content. Everyone, of course, knows The Chosen, um, certainly the big one, but you've got dry bar comedy, all of this. What, are you, what, do, what is your job as far as just distributing that, getting that in front of people? Yeah, so we have so many amazing original shows that fans have invested in and really helped to be a part of bringing them into the world. Um, and so we stream them in our app, of course, um, but we also license our content to other platforms and other distributors, you know, whether that's outside the U.S. Um, or even, you know, like The Chosen, you know, is on Peacock and Netflix and, and Amazon and, and over a hundred different platforms that we've licensed The Chosen to outside of the chosen app and outside of the angel studios app and so the distribution team that's that uh, that's the kind of things that we're doing on we're also putting our content in theaters so we just opened up a, a direct theatrical division where we're working with the theater chains um, to to put movies in theaters. So we just had a movie called His Only Son uh, come out at Easter yes. time, and it opened at number three. And so the theaters are telling us we want more, more of this content. And um, so th that's what distribution does: can, is get it can out. Can we there. talk about that? Because and and I know you've got a a, a new video coming out. I want to I want to talk about that in a minute. I will tease that. You know, the, stay tuned to the, for the rest of the interview, but. Um, isn't it, for, for me, I, I'm fascinated about this new trend where we're seeing uh, Christian movies and faith-based films succeeding in, in the theaters. We saw it recently with Nefarious, uh, His Only Son was a huge hit. The first three um, uh, episodes of the, of the new season of The Chosen right. you know, were just phenomenal. Um, can you talk a little bit about the market that has has produced this, or is this just you know blood, sweat, and tears behind the scenes that ma that has made this happen? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely. I would say it's a little bit of both. Um, I think what's I always think it's it's surprising to me that there haven't been. I mean, it's not like there aren't any Christians in America. Yeah, <laughs> it's a massive group, um, and so. I think the storytelling has just been getting better and better mm -hmm. and, and to a place where audiences are saying, yes, let's support that. And I think The Chosen's definitely started a, a much more of awareness um, that, that they want to see those kinds of stories. So it's been amazing to see, yeah, just in the last year, the number of theatrical releases. Um, and then after the pandemic, I think people are excited to, to gather together. Uh, we're really excited about theatrical because it's, it's, you know, we're all about creating communities around one, uh, around each of our programs and our shows. And, and the theater is the communal viewing window. Mm -hmm. So just to watch these things together that the fans have invested in and, um, and shared, and then to be able to not just not only watch it in your home with your family, but to be able to go to a theater and, and watch it on the big screen with a lot of people, I think it's, it's a, uh, it's a cultural event. Um, yeah. and, and, you know, we're, our mission is to, is to tell stories and amplify light. And we believe when we do that, it's going to impact culture. And one of the best ways to do that is in the theater because that is in your local community. And, uh, and you're telling the theater owners, you're, you're, when your, your community goes and supports that, you're telling, uh, the whole world, these are the kinds of stories that, uh, make a difference in our community. And these are the values that we want to see on the big screen. Yeah. Well, and, and they're moving. I mean, these are the type of experiences that I enjoy having, you know, that I hate walking out of the movie and just being like, that was a waste of my time. I had to shield my kids' eyes, you know, for half of it. 
um, and to see this. And really, I mentioned several movies just a minute ago, and those are all, I think, except for Nefarious, all from Angel Studios, right? Yeah, I mean, his only son and and uh, the chosen uh, were, I mean, Jesus Revolution, our, our friends General, oh, that's and true. Uh, yeah. those guys really have done amazing things. And so, we're have you helped too. any of these other films? You know, given them advice or or anything like that? Well, I mean, I think it? we're in the you know kind of the film you know faith film world. There's a you know how do we help each other? How do we how do we help all boats rise? And there's enough yeah. stories to be told, and so no, we we. We see each other at, at the different events, and, and there's lots of encouragement and, and support. We help promote and advertise Jesus Revolution inside the, the Chosen app and uh, because we want these projects to succeed. Yeah, and they are succeeding uh, v- very much. And I think not only succeeding because people are watching them, but succeeding because I think the message is really affecting people. I think we're seeing even Jesus Revolution. I heard about a lot of people who really came to faith in Christ because of it. The Chosen, I know, is that's certainly the case about The Chosen. And other shows like this, it's it's exciting for me as a as a film lover and also you know a believer. Um, quick question before we get to the big one: yeah. uh, What about Angel Studios uh, and the Chosen? The Chosen announced this week that they're going to be distributed by Lionsgate. Is that to sidestep and to get around Angel Studios? No, or? absolutely not. No. Uh, so uh, we have we have a new agreement we worked out with the Chosen about six months ago that enables more partners to come and support. The mission of the Chosen is to reach a billion people. We've reached about 125 million, so we've got, we're what, 10, 12% of the way, so we've got a long way to go. And we need more help, not less. Right. So we were excited for the Come and See Foundation to come on board and invest in languages and international. Mm -hmm. And so in order to enable that, we opened up our deal to allow for more people to come in. And so Lionsgate uh, is one of those partners that the Chosen has selected to help uh, to distribute outside of those places that we've already distributed. So mm-hmm. so they're helping share the load and helping to continue to spread the show. Um, but The Chosen is always an Angel Studios original. Anywhere Lionsgate even puts it, it'll have the Angel logo up in front of it. Mm-hmm. The Chosen will always ava- be available in all the new seasons and all the existing. The very first place to watch it will be The Chosen app and the Angel Studios app. Mm-hmm. So it's, uh, it's very much a part of Angel and uh, content that we're going to continue to bring to customers in the Angel Studios app. And it's that way forever. So Lionsgate, it's not... They're doing additional new things. They're not taking away anything. Well, I think people see things like uh, Disney buying Star Wars and then ruining it. And they're they're <laughs> afraid. Is that what's happening to the chosen? No, but you're not saying at all. they even... don't have creative control. Dallas Jenkins is very much the creative voice mm-hmm. of the chosen that and his team, and that that has always been the case. And so I think fans can continue to expect more of the show that they know and love. And um, again, Lionsgate just has sub licensing rights. They're not controlling any of the content. Um, they're not taking it away from the Angel app or the Chosen app. Mm-hmm. Um, so I get those fears, but there's there. This is this is a good thing I think for the Chosen to, yeah. to help more people see it. Yeah, that's great. Now speaking of film that we know and love, you've got a new one out that I think we're going to know and and enjoy, but also, man, I think it's I think it's going to be a um, like hitting a brick wall to see the reality of this. It's about child trafficking, right? Yeah, well, it's 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 about the story of a man who chose to make a difference and rescue children, mm-hmm. um, um, and it's called Sound of Freedom. It stars Jim Caviezel, and it opens in theaters July fourth. And so we're right in the middle of the busiest time of the year for theaters. And what better time to put such an important message in the theaters when all the people are there? So our mission is to get two million people in the seats during that week of that Freedom Week to represent the 2 million children that will be trafficked this year. Wow. So, and uh, you can actually, you can help pay it forward for other people. So the pay it forward program that's worked so well for the chosen, Mm -hmm. we've just now added the technology for pay it forward to work for the theaters. And so you can pay it forward for other people to have this experience of watching this film in theaters. And there's also free tickets that have already been paid forward for people. So if people go to angel.com slash freedom, they can actually claim a free movie ticket. Uh, and free movie tickets take your family to see this important film wow so you can you can not only go to s- and support this film but you can also buy tickets for someone else even someone you don't know that's right um wow that that's a huge blessing now talk to us about the importance of this film because you 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 made a comment that i think some people might miss in passing that two million children are trafficked I- in the world each year is that is that yeah. a yearly figure yeah yeah, the numbers and uh, 
are staggering, and I think it's why it's this this film is uh, important for us to engage with. Mm -hmm. um, it could be a hard topic, but the film is so powerful, and it's the the power of story to bring awareness and to change mm -hmm. perspective that we really want to tap into. Um, Tim Ballard, the, the, who is the the real life hero that the film is based on, um, talks about how he was looking to see. And as he started challenging this issue, so he was a federal agent, quit his job, lost his pension, mortgaged his house to go rescue kids mm -hmm. um, and really just went all in on this. And, and he was researching how how did they stop slavery in the past? Because really, this is a modern day form of slavery. Yeah. 100%. And uh, and he was looking back at what did the abolitionist movement do? And uh, what, one of the things he discovered was Abraham Lincoln met with Harriet Beecher Stowe, who uh, wrote Uncle Tom's Cabin. And he said, the, the quote is that this is the little woman that started all of this whole big war. And really that story ignited a movement uh, that had now that ended slavery and, and, and the U.S. And so what we're doing with Sound of Freedom is to say, how do we take that same model and use the power of story instead of a book, it's a movie to, to move people to awareness to confront an issue that maybe you want to, it's, it's, let's, let's just yeah. ignore that and put that over here, but to do it in a way that um, is done. In, and I think it's a perfect time for, for 4th of July when we're celebrating freedom to remind us that there are, there are people who are not free. Mm. And what are we going to do about that? When we're celebrating our freedom, can we see this story of, of a man who dared to, to make a difference? Um, and to, to, to bring the freedom that we uh, take for granted to bring that to, to children. Yeah. And, and, and I think if we can't agree on uh, that children should be free from this, I'm not sure what else we can agree on. But it is a moving and powerful story that um, the reason we want everyone in America to see this is because it's, it will, that in the same way that the Uncle Tom's Cabin made a movement, we believe that Sound of Freedom can be uh, the, the modern day version to, to end this. Wow. Wow. Yeah, we need. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm. <laughs> that's 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 so powerful. These these we don't think about this often, right? Um, we think about oh yeah, maybe in some dark corner of Africa, children are being um, trafficked. But this this takes place in America. It takes place it all across the world, and we think there's nothing we can do about it. But here's at least something we can do. We can go and, you know, invite people to this film, raise awareness for it. Is there anything else in the film that, that gives you any sort of other call to action, something that you can do um, as far as, you know, how, how to take care of your children, how to watch out for these things in your neighborhood? Yeah, I mean, I think there are some amazing examples of it. I think awareness, too, of just uh, being aware that it's a problem. I think that solves so much. Yeah, uh, I'm not an expert in, in all. There are so many organizations that that um, that that can, you know, help people with uh, local anti-trafficking efforts. Um, there's victim um, recovery and, and, and there's so many different groups that are doing things. So my encouragement would be to find, because uh, there's like 6,000 anti-trafficking groups in the U.S. So and they're in local cities all across. So it's, um, and Tim Ballard has an organization called Operation Underground Railroad. Mm -hmm. And so there's many organizations that people could connect with. So, but with the film, we are mostly trying to raise awareness and then yeah. we encourage people to find the, the best way that they can support it. Right. So the, the film's rated PG-13. I will say that um, the film is very tastefully and artfully done. You're not going to see something that you're not wanting to see. Um, it, it is a story of heroism and inspiration and hope, but it is a, a hard topic. And so it's one of those things that it's important to see. And so it's, it's a must-see film. Yeah. And, uh, and we hope that it will... Um, move people to make a difference yeah well it just describing it has <laughs> has been i think moving to all of us and uh i want to encourage everyone to get out there and see sound of freedom jared thank you so much for yeah. joining us on right america today yes welcome back to nrb 2023 in the beautiful free state of florida i'm your host keith two cent sanders and with me is tim ballard who has an amazing story that he's going to share with us first of all Tell us who you are, what your background is, and then we'll get a little bit more into what we're doing next. Thanks, and well, thanks so much for having me on the show. And so, yeah, I, I run an organization called Operation Underground Railroad, also another one called the Nazarene Fund. And what we do is we fight human trafficking, we fight uh, the exploitation of people, mostly focusing on children. Um, I spent 12 years as a special agent and undercover operator. 
uh, with the Department of Homeland Security. Ten years of that was on the border fighting human trafficking and just kind of got fed up with the bureaucracy and the jurisdictional limitations and just the restraints and just decided to be free. Um, so we started a nonprofit and now we are, we've worked in close to 30 countries. We're all over the world now and we're assisting law enforcement and aftercare services in, in the fight of child trafficking. Tim, before we got on, we had a pretty good conversation about how that started. Give us a little bit more about how you were willing to sacrifice for this cause and the sacrifices your family also made. So yeah, in 2012 and 13, I was involved in two cases that were pretty emotionally draining, but also just, I, I'm attached to it, you know, uh, in, in a very personal way to where I couldn't let go. And one was in Haiti. Um, there was a little boy, a U.S. citizen of Haitian descent who had been kidnapped. And I promised his father as a U.S. agent, I will never stop till we find your son. Simultaneous to that was an operation in Colombia where I had promised the law enforcement agencies there and in my mind and heart, the children who we were going to rescue in this operation in Cartagena. Well, both of those were, were shut down on me. The U.S. government said, we don't have business here. You need to come home, pack your bags, get back. You're done. And this had happened several times throughout my career. And I'm like, I can't. Like, I can't do it anymore. Before God, I can't do it. I can't. I, I have to meet my maker on this one. And so I called my wife and I'm like, this is crazy. But the only way that I can work these cases is if we quit. And my wife has much more faith than I do. Just like she felt it immediately. So I said, then let's quit. Like, whatever, you know, damn the consequences. We'll live in a tent. I remember she said to me, we'll live in a tent if we have to. Um, but if you think you can do something good here. And Glenn Beck, um, I knew him. Only because I'd been on a show for another reason, for a, a book about God in America I'd written, and and I got a hold of him, and he fund he he funded these operations, and so off we went, and we ended up having it, it turned into the largest rescue operation in Colombia um, that we did, the largest in the world that I know of. That over 130 uh, children and women were rescued, um, and then in Haiti we we ended up taking down a trafficking ring. Two of the kids we 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 actually rescued of the 28 on that. Haiti operation, which was in February of 2014, uh, we adopted. So now they're my children. Oh, wow. And that makes nine of nine kids now. So, uh, it's crazy. Man, has no commitment at all. <laughs> so, Speaking of commitment, can you talk to me about your faith and how that's driven you and your family to continue to drive towards this, to helping out these children and these families? Well, none of this would have, would have happened without, without my faith. None. Because really the, 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 the compelling factor that caused me to do something that's crazy because statistically a nonprofit is not going to last like 5% last through the first year. And I knew that going in, but I also knew that as my wife reminded me, we have a meeting with our maker someday. Like we're not here just to have fun. We're not here just to find the easiest way to live. No, we're here to serve people. Right. And, and, and then the other scripture that always comes to mind and helps me is, you know, there's one, there's one time in the scripture where Jesus gets like mafioso kind of, right? Where he, in his words, at least, it's righteous because it's him, but, and, it, and it's about children. And he it says, it's better that a millstone be hung around your neck and you toss into the sea, than you should hurt one of these children. So knowing where he stands, fine. I know he's with me on this one. Let's go, right? So, so without faith, I, w I wouldn't even have begun to do it and certainly wouldn't be going into dark places like, like we do. So we have a, an amazing movie about you that's coming out with Jim Caviezel is actually going to play him, which is super cool. But before we get there, tease everybody a little bit, talk to me about what it was like down on the border. And if you can, can you expand a little bit about the difference under Bush, because you served under him, and then under Obama? You can maybe do a little compare and contrast for us. Yeah, well, it's, well, it's so interesting because even under Bush and Obama, I'll say this, the, the building the border, I mean, Clinton built most of the wall. Yep. That's what's so crazy. This is not a partisan issue. As operators and law enforcement on that border, we saw the wall and border enforcement as a way to rescue children. I mean, being in, working in child crimes, that was the main thing for me. I, I can give you countless examples. In fact, I wrote an op-ed for Deseret News and, and explained this. I can give you countless examples of how we rescued children only because we were enforcing the laws and building a wall because it pushes the bad guys, it forces the bad guys to take the kids they're trying to hurt through a place where there's experts to rescue children. It's a very basic concept that the world doesn't seem to understand or pretending that they don't understand. Um, instead, they flip it and say, oh, you're so racist, but, uh, Trump, you're, you have no compassion. What? Inhumane. It's the, it's the opposite, yes. the only humane thing, the only compassionate thing, if you care about children, is to enforce the laws. And so when, when this is happening, I'm watching, I, I just found out Biden just took away the option to, to DNA test children. 
they're coming across. Even better. And it's insanity because you want to accuse Trump. I'm not saying Biden's racist, but you're accusing Trump of being a racist and he doesn't care about foreign children. What are you doing, Biden? If you found a child in New York City or in Orlando that was lost from his parents, what would you do? You Would you just give that kid away without doing any testing, without background checks to any sponsor who comes? Because that's what's going on right yes. now. Any one who claims I'm the sponsor, yes. our tax dollars are actually sending them in, by bus or plane to the sponsor. There's no background check. Yep. These are traffickers. But this is them being humane. And we all know this is for the reason to import the votes that they, they possibly can. So, yes, the border crisis is real, and it is actually making this inhumane situation so much worse. And it does affect the children, like like you're saying. Absolutely. It's hor we are the number one demand for child sex in the world, the United States, in terms of consumption of child exploitation material. So that should tell us something. We're number two or three for destination countries for human trafficking. We are the hub. We are the demand. So if you're opening the doors and letting children just come in, and by the way, 85,000 unaccompanied minors have come into the country, and now we don't know where they are, all under the Biden administration. 85,000 children. Some of them, thousands of them are under five years old. What's going on? These, these are kidnapped children from Central America who are being brought here to be abused by pedophiles. Yes. There's no question. You know, a a three-year-old doesn't show up by, her, by herself, right? And then and, there's the parents that have been fooled to hear that if my child is on the other side, they can then pull me over, and right. then their child is gone. And, they, and where do they go? They disappear. Exactly. The sponsor. Gone. And that's it. Let's talk about something a little bit better. There's a great movie about you coming out. Give us the name of the movie, who's starring, and tell me a little bit about your apprehension that we talked about before to not actually wanting to do the movie. Absolutely. So the movie's called Sound of Freedom, and um, it's based on one of our, the very first big operation we did in Colombia um, that rescued all those children we were talking about. Uh, and what happened was right in the wake of that, we didn't expect this, but uh, several producers came to us. Hollywood came to us. Oh, we were interested in this doing this movie. And I remember walking off the set of, of the Sony lot after a pitch was given to us. And my wife was like, there's no way. Like, we do not like Hollywood. And in fact, Hollywood is the reason I have to do what I do. <laughs> They're, they're facilitating the demand. They're, they're, they're sexualizing the nation with, with all their content, right? So that's why kids get hurt. So, um, I don't like Hollywood. And so when they came to me, these guys felt differently. They did. And they're, and they're Christian guys, the Mexican uh, producers. And, and I felt differently about them. But when they, when they, you know, I still was hesitant. And they asked me who, well, who would like to play you in the film? Cause we're going to start filming now. Um, and this was after years of like flirting with the idea, writing a script. I never thought it would actually happen. But when they said to me in, in December of 2017, they said, we got to go. Who, who's going to play you? And right, right out of the gates, I said, Jim Caviezel is the only one that can play me. Like, what? He doesn't look like you at all. No, we, we're thinking someone more looks like you, your body type, whatever. And I said, I don't care. Like, you guys are still Hollywood until you prove otherwise. Fair. <laughs> and, and, and they did prove otherwise, by the way. Um, and I just, I know that there's only one guy in Hollywood or in the industry who loves Jesus. The only one I know for sure. And that's Jim Caviezel. So he has to play me or I'm not, I'm not moving forward. Have you had a chance to meet with him, talk with him, talk to him? No, about not, not at that time. Okay. At that time, they, and they said, okay, well, I guess you're... So they, they, they actually went around his agent and just went right to him. He read the script and, picked, and, and accepted the job in like five days. That's amazing. Because he felt it. I and mean, he was sobbing. And then we met. And he's one of my best friends today. So That's amazing. It's such yeah. a great story. What's next for you going forward? How are you going to continue to get this message out to folks? And, and how... Give us some, I guess, tidbits of what folks can do to help this situation. So we just partnered with Angel Studios, which I love because my favorite show on the planet is The Chosen. It's the only show I, I watch with my family every Sunday. Um, and the, what people can do is get loud because here's the problem. Like, we've rescued 7,000 women and children over the last 10 years since wow. we started. And we're proud of that, except when you look at the macro situation, the numbers are millions, millions of children. So it's a dent statistic. It's all worth it, if even yes. just for one. Yes. But I, if we want to really end this, I don't have the power to do that. And the history has told us that it's always the storytellers who end the problems, right? When Lincoln met Harry Beecher Stowe, who wrote, who was one of the loudest storytellers to fight 19th century transatlantic slave trade, right? He said to her, so you're the lady that wrote the book that started this war. And he, 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 he understood that it wasn't even him, that people got so loud that Lincoln was kind of forced to his knees and turns to God and makes the Civil War about liberating the captive. Which, that, that's which a he, very good point. Which he didn't. That wasn't the reason. That wasn't the start the of beginning. it. You're correct. And so we're looking at this the same way. Like, how do you shift cultures and change presidents' minds of nations 
it's always the storytellers. And so um, Sound of Freedom can be the Uncle Tom's Cabin, if you will, for modern day slavery. It can be the thing that wakes people up and gets them so loud that like right now, I think it's like five to one drug agents in the US to anti-trafficking agents. Let's, fl let's, fl let's, let's switch that. These are children. They're more important than seizing a, a, a pound of cocaine. I'd rather s seize or rescue a child. Right? find one more, yep. But we got to get loud because when we're loud in a republic, I still believe in the... Even though corruption's everywhere, I do believe in this in, in in the Republican or the Republic, you know, dream at least that the people, if they if they're loud enough, can shift can shift things. And so I I see Eduardo Verastegui, Angel Studios, Alejandro Monteverde, the storytellers, they're the heroes. They're the ones who are going to end this, not not me. And and that means everybody else can get involved in that way. Everybody can be a storyteller. Everybody can go buy a ticket to Sound of Freedom. Everybody can pay it forward. Angel Studios allows people to buy tickets for others who might not be able to afford it. So buy a ticket for yourself and buy 10 more for for whoever, because the, 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 the more people see this film, the louder they get, and maybe we can end this. Your energy and passion here is absolutely inspiring, and I really hope you can continue that. You're actually inspiring me at this moment. I want to make sure that my audience is going to hear about this as well. Thank you so much. You talked a little bit earlier about some other nonprofits that you're a part of. Can we get the names of those and how people might be able to contribute to that? Sure. So I also i am the CEO and on, on the board of, of the Nazarene Fund. This was a, a, a fund that, that Glenn Beck and David Barton started in 2014 when ISIS was rolling in and destroying Christian villages in northern Iraq. And Glenn Beck did a heroic thing by raising all this money and, and sending, I think, 15,000 people, Christians and Yazidi people, out of harm's way to Australia, Canada, other places. Um, and then he called me and he said, hey, this is now getting into extractions because we didn't get everybody out. ISIS kidnapped so many kids. Can you take this over and run this so we can start doing operations? So I took it over in like 2016, I think. And so they're kind of sister organizations, Operation Underground Railroad and the Nazarene Fund. A very similar mission, but the Nazarene Fund focuses on persecuted Christians. You know, Christians are the number one group persecuted in the world. No one wants to say that. Because Can't even say it. It's not politically correct to say it. Absolutely. But not even close. You, you, people are beat up, killed, and hurt uh, because they're Christians more than any other religion is being persecuted and so we we stand up for for those we go in as, as, largely in the middle east africa um places like that where we we go in and 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 help them and, and and you know and they're and they're real christians by the way sometimes i don't know if i'm a real christian when i look at them i but, just feel i'm missing the mark man oh, I, I feel yeah let me tell you something i i get like weepy when i think of they they put these 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 kind of some of these coptic christians or the, these christians that are inside in the middle east they they tattoo the cross on their hand they can't cover it up because and and they're actually that's a death warrant for them yep. possibly but they do it to show like i would rather die yep. than denounce and they and i'm i told my wife i i, I got to get a tattoo of a cross on my hand that's awesome just because i because it's like we're safe we can be christians here okay yeah. i mean we're, it's, it's they're, they're hitting us right they're hitting us yep. but they'll be but, discriminated against but right. you're not fearful for your life right but these guys are real christians who, who we, we should actually look to them as, a, as an example. You're somebody that we should look to as an example. Oh. I've really appreciated our time with you. Can you just give us one more chance everywhere that we can reach you and how we can help out with this? Yeah, OURrescue.org uh, is, is the website you can go to to support our operations. Uh, download the Angel Studios app, download it, and buy tickets for yourself and others. July 4th, Sound of Freedom comes out. And we want everyone to, we want 2 million people that first weekend on July 4th, uh, representing the 2 million children who are currently being sex trafficked in the world. That's all Tim Ballard. That's all the time we have for today. We'll see you next time right here on Point of View.